So I just saw Boy in the Corner and it was pretty good. Now before I start this review, I want to give a big shout out to Joshi Lee, the writer and director of this film, who sent me a screener for Boy in the Corner, so if you're watching Joshi, thanks for hooking me up, man, I really appreciate it. Anyway, as for the movie itself, it's pretty dank. Now for those of you who don't know, this is the feature-length debut of writer-director Joshi Lee, who prior to this film has made a couple of shorts, and I gotta say, this is pretty good for a first-time feature, because there's a lot I really liked about it. I think the best thing I can say about this film, that it's clear that Lee has a lot of talent behind the camera, because in terms of the actual look of this film, how certain shots are framed, and how long takes go before a cut is made, it's clear that this director has a lot of confidence in terms of how they want this movie to be presented. I can't say that I absolutely loved every technical aspect of this film, as there were definitely a couple of moments where the film was just way too fucking bright, either because it was super oversaturated or the literal sun made it difficult to see anything in general. These moments where the lighting was too powerful made it feel like I was watching those radiator scenes from Eraserhead, and I'm not exactly sure if this was an intentional choice or not, but these are very minor issues I had with this film's presentation, because for the most part, it's pretty solid. Without a doubt, my favorite technical aspect of this film is that it's in black and white and shot in 4x3 aspect ratio, and unlike some movies where they just do shit like this for no reason, there's a lot of purpose behind why the film was shot this way. Having the black and white 4x3 aspect ratio really helped create this claustrophobic atmosphere, which is incredibly fitting for a movie like this, because through the character of Miles' perspective, we see that he feels trapped in his environment. He lives in an incredibly small apartment, there's not enough food to eat, he doesn't have money to buy clothes or a phone, and his community is littered with gang members. The film showcases that Miles lives in a very shitty environment, and the black and white 4x3 aspect ratio really highlights just how boxed in and dreary he feels, it's great. Speaking of Miles, Siren Vergara, the actor who plays the main character, gave a pretty good performance. While there were definitely a couple of moments where his performance came off as kind of melodramatic, over the top, and a little cringe at times, it's obvious that Vergara has a bright future ahead of him because he was definitely the best actor in the entire film. His performance was especially effective during the more quiet moments where he barely says anything, and he just lets his quietness and lack of action do the talking for him. And it's during these quieter moments where he truly shines. This is a film where a lot of bad shit is surrounding him and the way this environment shapes him to become the type of person he is, and it's pretty well communicated. It's through this environment and through his performance that I became super invested in his character and was interested to see where his journey went next. The rest of the actors in the film were pretty good for the most part as well. While I don't think anyone else gave as good of a performance as Vergara, I think for the most part everyone was appropriate for the role they were given. Everyone felt incredibly natural and no one felt like they were really out of place, and a lot of it's due to the film's script. A lot of the dialogue felt incredibly natural and felt like something the characters would actually say instead of actors just reading off a script. And I I think that's the best thing you can really say about dialogue, it's when it's not forced. I mean, the dialogue was so natural that I was at times convinced that this was just the actors saying what they think their characters would say, and not just memorizing a script. It's really great, and I have to give Lee props. The overall vibe of this film felt very reminiscent of something like mid-90s or a Sean Baker film, in that they're coming-of-age dramas that take place during very dark yet specific periods of time, and I think that sort of tone really helped elevate a lot of what happens in Boy in the Corner. One thing that I'll say that I'm a bit mixed on is the music, not the music itself, as for the most part I actually really liked the music, but more so in terms of how it's used. This is a film that heavily relies on its music to not just communicate the tone of certain scenes, but also help elevate specific moments of drama and conflict that occur throughout the movie. And for me, it was sort of a toss-up in terms of whether or not it actually accomplished that. I don't want to go too deep into specific examples because I would just be spoiling the movie then. So instead, I'm just going to say that any scene involving Miles and his sister was where the music was used effectively, and any music involving Miles and his gang members aside from like one scene in a car was kind of distracting and forced. Anyway, that's all I'll say for now because then I'd have to get into spoilers, and seeing as this film only got released recently on November 14th, I want to keep this review spoiler free, so if this sounds like your kind of thing, I highly recommend you check it out. It's available on Apple TV, Amazon Prime, Google Play, and Sky Store, so check the film out on any of those sites if this film interests you. Anyway, as for me, I'm going to give Boy in the Corner a 6 out of 10. It's closer to a 7 than a 5. Thank you, bye bye.